I only just got the call yesterday to be in this game. I wasn't even supposed to be in it. One of the point guards went down, and then Trey Burke had an ankle injury and couldn't start the game, and they needed anybody to play. So they called me since they knew I went by um nearby Fordham University. They knew I'd be in the area. They just needed any point guard to play, and I got the call, and here I am, all out of nowhere. It's just so, looking at the crowd, that might have affected my first shot there, and... I know, you know, I was not really a great player in college or anything. I didn't exactly set the world on fire. But now that I have my opportunity, I'm hoping I can just show some people that I'm okay to be drafted. Uh, talking to my agent, he said, right now the prospects of me letting, getting drafted were not that good. And I'll probably have to spend some time in the NBA D-League for a year or two. But um, this is my opportunity, and I was just so nervous, and it's showing. I just had a horrendous start, and I was never a great shooter in college in this game. I realized that I was just not going to be able to shoot the ball. There's no reason for me to take jump shots. And I could tell my team is frustrated with me. I could tell they wanted Trey Burke on the court. They didn't want me on the court. They're like, who is Denny Tice? Get him off the court. And just hearing it and hearing the crowd eventually booing. And it's just overwhelming. And there, I had to do something. I had to do some, get some sort of positive play going. So I stripped Carter Williams of the ball. And then here, Macklemore, he's getting a little loose with the ball. And... If I can't if I can't do anything much on offense, I gotta at least try defense. And there, that was a nice alley to Old Depot. I just gotta do anything, all right. My goal at the end of this game is just to try to get people to know who I am and get some scouts to hopefully draft me. Cause I wanna at least get drafted. I wanna at least be certified that I'm gonna go to a training camp at the start of the season. But I don't know. So far, it's just a mess. It's just you know when you're coming and playing in MSG. I played MSG twice while in my Fordham career, but. Besides that, you know, just playing the big lights in MSG, it's scary, and I could tell people are looking. My draft stock is dropping. If it was, if it wasn't already down before. It is down now, and here, ah, I I can't even throw a good pass. The one thing I know I'm good at is passing. That's the one thing I was good at in college. I averaged over eight assists per game at Fordham, and. I couldn't even do that right. I threw it at the damn rim. I almost got the ball going through rim penalty, the one that you never see. My defense was okay. I was guarding Carter Williams, and he is a tough player to guard, especially compared to the people I guard at Fordham. Oh, man, he's a, he's a rough guy, and he stripped me just now, but I held my own for the most part. There you see somebody threw it out of bounds there. It might have been um, Macklemore, I think. He threw it out of bounds, and here I find Cody Zeller, and... At this point, I decided, you know what? I gotta do anything. I just gotta go all out. I cannot play timid. I cannot play with fear because that's one thing you can't do in the NBA. And if you do it in the rookie showcase, you're definitely not gonna be able to do anything in the NBA. So I just started to play recklessly. If I wasn't playing recklessly enough, I started to play recklessly. But you know, with a with a mindset that I what I had of like a plan of what to do on each play. You know, and I was just gonna, you know, set the world on fire, try to make sports, sports Center, try to make the Post, you know, the New York Post, try to do anything, anything, you know, anything to make an NBA team notice me. And you see, I'm still struggling. The teammates still really wish Trey Burke got more minutes. Like I said, he was limited on ankle injury, he barely got any minutes. And here's where things start turning around. I started setting screens for teammates, and you know, when you set a screen for a teammate, especially as a point guard, they look at you differently. They look at you differently. They're like, wow, this guy's putting his body out there for us. And I started to get more strips. I stripped um, Carter. Actually, I'm not sure it was Carter Williams. I think I stripped Carter Williams. Yeah, and then Trey Burke made the play. I got the ball, and then I alley-ooped it to New Orleans Noel. And that got the crowd going. The crowd started cheering, and sooner or later, I, I could feel myself getting some Denny Tice chance sooner or later. Maybe the crowd might actually know my name after this game. And here on the fast break, getting ambitious with the alley-oop. And, uh man, I wish Porter would have gotten that instead of Old Depot. But it's okay, because now we're just getting it going. Oh, man, Otto Porter on the alley-oop. And Madison Square Garden is loving this show we're putting on. It's Lob City right now in the rookie showcase game. We get the rebound, and that was supposed to go for Old Depot there. But, um, uh, I guess he can't get everyone to go. But, I mean, even though I have seven turnovers, that's a damn lot. I mean, no reason why I should have seven turnovers, but a lot of that came in the first half and the beginning of the third quarter. But besides that, I just started turning it up. And here, we're looking at the oop again. Why not? Because that's the only thing the crowd knows me for. I might as well keep on going at it. I cannot shoot. 
<laughs> you know, I might as well go for that. There, I got a little bit too ambitious with the stress. But like I said, I had to go all out. And my plan was to, you know, make um, Carter Williams nervous on defense. And that's what I did. I made him nervous about where he was holding the ball. And I made the defense nervous for the alley-oops. And then Cody Zeller will make some plays. You see him drawing the foul there. And now my teammates are starting to like me. They're like, I like this alley-ooping guy. I like this tight guy. He's alley-ooping. He's passing the ball. He's getting me the ball. And... Mission accomplished? Maybe. Maybe. Because this is a really gimmicky style of offense, and will it translate into the actual NFL is what a lot of GMs and scouts are wondering. And that answer is probably no. But in the meantime, let me put on a show for you. alley it to Oladipo right there. He doesn't dunk it down, but the alley is always pretty, and it always make the highlight reel as it does here again. And here I strip Bennett, my fourth steal of the game, and I'm open on the break, and I can actually get some points here. I grab points. Wow. And look at my teammate grades all the way up to a B. So, I guess we'll just have to wait until draft night. In the meantime, you know, hopefully I get a call from some teams and... I did get a call from some teams. I got a call from the Brooklyn Nets. I got a call from the Denver Nuggets. But one team in particular that caught my eye was my hometown team, the New York Knicks. And here is my draft interview with them. Yes, definitely. I was born ready for this. It'd be an honor to play for one of my favorite teams as a kid growing up. Getting the chance to play alongside Melo and Amare? Wow, how can anyone not want that? Easy answer. My parents have spent their entire life putting me into the position I'm in right now. I want nothing more than to take care of them and make sure that the rest of their lives are as carefree as possible. I don't need glitz and glamour. I just need my loved ones cared for. And now it's draft night. Now it's time to see if I'm going to get drafted. Maybe second round. My my GM or, or my agent, I mean, told me probably second round. I'm not getting drafted in the first pick overall. Not getting drafted in the top five and definitely not the lottery. So I'm going to have to sit a while. It's going to be a long night and it probably won't happen in the first round. So I'm just going to have to sit and wait and see. Like the 10 pick goes by, not me. 15 pick goes by, not me. I'm sitting, I'm waiting. The Nets, one of the teams I talked to, pass on me at number 22. Then the Pacers go up, they draft someone else, and then all of a sudden, something happened with the 24th pick. With the 24th pick. pick in the 2013 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select the 21-year-old point guard from Fordham University. Wow, the Knicks took me with the 24 pick. I got to hear my name called by David Stern. I was going to be in the D-League if I didn't play in that rookie showcase game. And I was going to be out of the NBA completely if I didn't step it up in that second half. Now here I am signing a contract to be on the New York Knicks roster. Wow, what a journey. And the journey has only begun. Now the real journey starts. That was the pre-journey. Now the real journey starts. Now we're going into the NBA. Now we're going to be playing against the LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, the Kobe Bryant, the people you idolize and grow up watching. And now you got to play against them and hopefully beat them. Now the New York Knicks, I'm not going to be the starter right away. I'm going to have to get past Raymond Felton, Iman Shumper, and whoever else is in the way. But, I mean, I get to play with guys like Carmelo and Amari so, and JR, so... Hope for the best, man. Hope for the best. So, um, stick with me with this Denny's Highs journey, man. If you guys like the start, the it's only going to get better from here. Way better from here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more Denny Tice, and I will catch you guys next time.